Now let's come to the nuke. We could delete the nodes we used before. Let's restart the new procedure from the shooting material. The first thing is to save it to specific paths. Then tap the file name. After saving it well, let's create three basic nodes for projection. Press tab to input the node name. The first node is the scene. The scene node is a 3D scene node. The second node is camera node. Press tab again to input camera. We'll show that we create the camera node. Let's add the third one, scanline render. Let's use the scanline render to connect the scene and the camera. Connect the scene node to it with its OBJ input and the camera node with cam input. So which should we connect to the BG background input? Let's create a constant node, which is color lamp. Adjust the file size, that's the scale here. Here choose this format. What's its function? It's to set all projections with the same format as materials. If we use different size materials in projection, the final effect will be concluded in this format. It's a technique, and you can have a try. Also connect the camera node to the scene node. Now just three basic nodes form into a triangle structure. That's where we start from to make production every time. Well, let's check the camera node. Double click to check its attributes. Take read from file here. Its function is like its name. Open the file there. And in the past, let's choose FBX files we exported from Maya and the tracking department. Click yes. Well, press one to quick display it and check the camera in 3D scene. Click middle mouse button. Zoom out the viewport, then we could find the camera. Now we find that we successfully import the camera node to the scene. Let's check its play slider. The camera is attached with preset camera movement indeed. It seems to be of no problem. Well, next step. After we import the camera, we need to import the models we built for projection in Maya 1x1. One one. Press tab to create a radio node. It imports geometry or 3D model from a specific location. Double-click this node and check the file in its attributes. Click this icon to open the path. Choose one building at one time. Let's import them one by one. In 3D viewport, we can see that the first building has been displayed here. Let's import other four buildings with the same method. Here I want to emphasize that the naming is very important. Name it with a naming rule. It will be helpful for us to import an input 3D file for the production and matching layers from Photoshop. Now we imported all the models built in Maya for projection. Here I got used to have two viewports by split horizontal. Add a viewer node here. We could press tab to switch 2D and 3D viewport. I tend to see both 2D and 3D viewport at the same time, so as to judge whether the effect conform to our demand. 
press A to switch to alpha format, for it looks unintuitive. Let's make the shooting material at the background. Place it under the rendered image. Here add a merge node. The merge node works like the layer of Photoshop. Its rule is that A layer is always over the B layer. The rendered content should be placed over the shooting material. So it should connect to A branch. Press Shift S to switch A and B branch. Select it and press 1 to display it. Let's switch Viewer 2 to this node so that we could check what the rendered material over the shooting material is like. We could find the model's lack of materials so it looks all black. The general control of models have been displayed here. Press Tab to create a checkerboard node. Checkboard is the checkboard material. We could connect these models to it, so that all models are assigned with this material. Assigning checkboard to the models can help us check the perspective and the model's shape. In this way, we could check its shape more clearly. We don't need the flow model for now, and it blocks our observation. So press D to disable the node temporarily. Next, let's play it in Nuke. So as to check if this model stand at where they should be. If there are displacement errors or other errors. Let's check it first. Now watch it patiently. Now we've played it once and check it once. So far, we haven't seen errors in displacement or other aspects. Then we could come to the next step. Next, we need to output a position reference material. As the position reference for 2D layers production in Photoshop. Why should we output such a position reference material? If we could not confirm the model's position from the position reference, we may place those buildings based on our assumption. Then it's easy to cause displacement errors for they don't match themselves. Then let's check how to do next. First, find the frame suitable to be exported as the reference in Photoshop. The first step is to find the most suitable frame to paint on. Having checked it once, both frame 1 and frame 260 seems to be improper. This frame seems to be proper for painting, for it remains the right buildings. And it's also when this building clusters are close to the camera, so that we could save lots of pixels. Here we need to choose the frame full of the content we need. After we decide the frame, press W to create a right node. It's used to output. Connect it to the node for rendering the scanline render node, so as to output components of these 3D models. The only requirement is to attach position references to these 3D models with checkerboard. The red part is nearly cut after the frame 64, so it's the most suitable frame. Well, then let's import the frame 64, double-click red node, change its channels to RGBA. Without alpha, what we output is just an image and we need to mat it manually. It's troublesome, so remember to output it with alpha. Click this icon of the file and find the output path. Input the file name we need to export.
Here I input f64.tf. I tend to use the format here. So there are other common formats for its little compression. Change database to 16-bit. Click Render, then this panel appears. We could input the frame we need for rendering. Well, here we use the frame 64, so we input 64 here to output the frame 64. After gaining the frame 64 of the models, we still need this frame 64 of the background for the production in Photoshop. Connect the background node to another red node. To output the frame 64 of this shooting material as a background, output it in the same way. Input the path and the file name in file here. Use the TIFF format. Change it to 16-bit so that we could work directly. We'll press Render. Still input 64 here so that we could output both the frame 62 of the models and the background. Now we've output the frame 64 of the shooting material. And the model's position reference we'll use in Photoshop. In the next lesson, we'll create 2D layers in Photoshop.